Industries. Well done, Pedro. Well done. Uh, I call Barbara Kuriga. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, one thing I will agree with with the last uh, speaker is that, yes, this is uh, the most important uh, of the appropriations. And while I don't sit on the Primary Production Select Committee, uh, I did for three years, and I'm never far away. And uh, to put a quote in place before I get on with the appropriations is uh, turned up at the Mystery Creek Field Days in my electorate, and to quote uh, Mark Patterson said, oh, am I ever going to go to an industry event where I don't see you, unquote, so I'm not referring to you, Madam Speaker, and I said never. So there you go. So uh, I want to speak, I want to speak about uh, Embovis to start off with because uh, that's uh, taking up uh, obviously the lion's share uh, of the funding as we go forward and um, you know we've all got to get in and support this uh, phased eradication, at least our one shot at it. We're all going to be also very carefully watching this springtime as we work through this most stressful of times. Because one of the things that I've said to the Minister and will continue to say to the Minister is we must know where the off-ramps are. We do hope we can eradicate this disease. But if we get to a point where we realise that we have lost the game, in terms of dollars, we need to be realistic. We don't want to be spending $900 million and then finding out that we've uh, actually lost the battle. So uh, it's really important that we keep a very, very solid handle on that. I also uh, want to make mention of those farmers out there that are going through that process. And I have had lots of calls and I have had lots of emails and I've spoken to a lot of people. And it's been a very, very hard time, not just with the disease and not just uh, having to go through the loss of their cows and the culling of their cows, but it does need to be noted there have been delays in compensation. Uh, there have been uh, um, you know, uh, times when the timing of the culls of those cows have actually made a difference to the farmers, and we're noticing it right now, particularly when they're in that calving time. And it hasn't always been the clearest of situations. And moving forward, it has got clearer. And uh, I thank everyone for the clarity of at least knowing where we're heading. But I can tell you that the Rural Support Trust have picked up um, a lot of people, and I do want to put a call out to all of those people who work tirelessly in the uh, Rural Support Trust. Um, I know Neil Bait up very well, just to mention a couple of names, and Mike Green is another one who's in our local area, and they work absolutely tirelessly. I'd like to mention Overseer because um, I have um, noted that in the last budget uh, there is money put uh, forward for Overseer. Now, Overseer has been one of those programs that's had its glitches for quite some time. It's actually on a general purpose. It's sort of kind of accurate when you put it all together, but by farm and per farm, it's actually um, not so accurate and quite difficult to use. It's good to see funding go into that, but I think we need to think about the wider purpose of Overseer as well, because Overseer... Um, really, if you look at the end result of what we want from Overseer, we actually want cleaner waterways. And there is a difference in what councils are doing around the country. So we've got some councils that are using Overseer to measure. We've got other councils who are actually looking at what the water quality is and then working backwards from the quality of the water to see what needs to be done. So I think Overseer is a tool but I still think we can improve it, but we shouldn't overplay it because it will be one tool in a, in a toolbox of things that are effective um, for uh, cleaning up our waterways. And um, on that, I was very uh, pleased to hear the conversation about water storage before. And we're talking about primary industries now. We're talking about water storage and we're talking about the estimates around catchments. I do hope that when we continue to talk about water storage that we actually talk about water storage in terms of communities rather than just the old um, story that it's just about farming and it's just for farmers because it's for the environment, it's for the people who live in the town and we are not short of water in this country, we are just right. short of water right. storage. The other thing I would like to talk about is a little bit about forestry and the short time that I've got left. There are lots of conversations going on about how many trees that we're going to plant. 
I think we need to think a lot more, Minister, about rural proofing and the roads that those trees are going to be carted out on in the future and all the other dynamics that go around trees. And we've seen some quite bad events um, in eastern North Island recently. Thank you, Madam Chair. I call Kerry Allen. Uh, kia ora e mai ana, uh, 